the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, robotics automation seems to be at the heart of the Ocado strategy. What is it that you personally seek to achieve for Ocado? Well, I, I think we are on this continual journey um, you know, of uh, not just innovation, but of, uh, uh, not just disruption, but actually self-disruption, you know, and uh, uh, we obsess about the holes in the cheese, so to speak. We're never happy with what we've done. We just see all the ways to make it better, and I think that's got us to where we are today, and uh, will power, you know, our creativity and our, our thirst for improvement going forwards. Um, and if you're on that road, you know, you have to be continually looking out at how to future-proof yourselves, how to reinvent yourself into new areas, how to acquire competencies, um, how to build a network um, of alliances, um, whether it be on the research side or um, with government or with other organizations. And, uh, uh, you know, so you're, we have to look much further out, if you like, than where the business is currently operating within a card of technology. And so, yeah, that's that journey of, of, of self-reinvention. And it's not, it's not just about what we're innovating. It's very much about how we, how we innovate and how we're constantly trying to sort of uh, what I call innovate the innovation factory. Can you give us some maybe case study examples that you could share with us of how you're using this technology today? Gosh, uh, it's, it's a massive uh, area for us. I mean, uh, artificial intelligence and to a large extent robotics pervade our end-to-end e-commerce fulfillment and logistics mm -hmm. platform. Um, they crop up everywhere. I mean, we use um, AI and machine learning at the front end to uh, help, if you like, uh, customers shop faster with less friction. I mean, our customers are typically shopping for a 50-item basket and they're shopping sometimes uh, more than once a week. And um, we need them to be able to complete that journey in a, just a few minutes. I mean, it would be wonderful if people jumped out of bed in the morning and said, woohoo, you know, today is my online uh, grocery <laughs> shopping day. But I think most customers don't, maybe some do. And therefore, um, you know, we're trying to create this broadband of grocery that lets, you know, gets groceries to their kitchen tables without them almost having to think about it. And that's the journey we're on there. But we also use it um, to help optimize our supply chain and predict, you know, uh, the demand for the 50,000 different items we're going to sell. We use it extensively in our warehouses whether it be uh, controlling and optimizing the swarms of thousands of robots in our newest warehouses, whether it be managing the thousands of crates uh, moving around 30 kilometers of conveyor in our existing warehouses, whether it be uh, optimizing the layout of those warehouses as the demand for different goods changes with seasonality, with promotions, with uh, um, celebrity chef recipes or whatever it may be. Um, and then at the far end the, or the downstream end on the last mile, it's about optimizing the delivery routes that we drive, but also providing oversight across the whole process, uh, acting like the third gyro, if you like, in an aircraft that's kind of believing nobody and is just sitting there going, well, that, you know, actually, that, that system there looks like it's not telling the truth. You know, I, I think we should have a look at that. And that's, uh, so it's a, it's a very pervasive yeah. set of technologies. And it's, it's two technologies out of really a set of five, because if, we also make a lot of use of the Internet of Things, of cloud, and of big data. And it's the, the synergy of those and the intersection of those that uh, really powers our business. Can you tell us a little bit about the Okada Smart Platform? Sure. So this is our uh, latest, uh, if you like, uh, exciting journey. Uh, we, we started this journey very back in 2013, where we signed our first B2B customer, uh, which was Morrison's, to help them move their grocery business online uh, as a bricks and mortar retailer and uh, we got them online in early 2014 and at that point uh, I gathered everybody in a card of technology into a hotel room and I said you know fantastic job getting Morrison's live 11 minutes early uh, and now you know the next challenge is we're going to rewrite the whole thing uh, and that's the journey we've been on and so we've been rewriting that end-to-end e-commerce fulfillment and logistics platform to run in the cloud um, from scratch to design it as a platform that we could make available to multiple bricks and mortar retailers around the world to prepare for creating this kind of sticky ecosystem you know, of a platform that uh, lots of companies could connect to. And, um, and it comes in two halves. It, it's the software that I've just described, and then it's this swarm robotics technology for building 
are automated warehouses, the first of which we put live in Andover at the end of 2016. And that, that's a complete game changer. Um, and it's a vital ingredient of the platform because of the way it scales, the way it allows you to start small and grow big uh, in a new territory where maybe online grocery is in its early stages. And the, the sum of those two halves, so to speak, uh, is the Ocado Smart Platform. And now we're in the process of growing a whole new solutions part of the business that whose job it is to sell and support uh, and make a success for our B2B customers of that uh, platform. And uh, we've obviously been signing a number of very high profile deals uh, around the world we talked a little bit about constantly, constantly reinventing uh, yourselves and even disrupting yourselves. You've been quoted actually as saying, and I'm going to read, it's not enough to just be innovative. Disruption is not an endpoint. It's a permanent state of turbulent flux. So if you, it would be great if you could explain to us a little bit about, about how you do that. How do you continuously disrupt yourselves and make sure you're constantly staying in front of the pack? Okay. Well, it's a big topic uh, for us. Um, and uh, one way we do it is we have distinct kind of innovation streams. Um, a huge amount of our innovation uh, for our existing UK retail businesses and indeed for the platform is just business as usual for us, including quite a lot of areas which many companies would consider R&D. Um, because as a disruptor, that is what we do. I, I, I suppose what I'm really about to describe is like a river network where innovation flows down the river, you know, and, and th these are the sort of uh, the engineering activities that are further down river, drawing upon the kind of the more researchy, radical innovation that happens upstream. Um, and as we move upstream, you then get to our research uh, departments uh, who are focused on things like robotics, some of the AI work. Um, other kinds of experiments, advanced simulation techniques, because we model everything that we do in the car that we can. Um, we have extraordinary simulations of our warehouses that we use to test algorithms um, and uh, put them through their paces, so to speak, uh, long before we build them. And that's now a core competence of ours. Um, and then after moving upstream again, you get to our kind of 10x or advanced research uh, department. And that, that's focused very much on this self-disruption, on looking for game-changing opportunities um, uh, which require you to place bets which perhaps in many cases the business would never place. Uh, can you tell us a bit about second hands? Sure, so this is, this is one of our more edgy uh, robotics um, uh, streams. Um, we have two Horizon 2020 funded projects underway. Uh, one is called SOMA, which is building new kinds of robotic gripper um, mm -hmm. hands for uh, doing things like robotic picking and decant and so forth. Uh, and then its sister is Second Hands, and this is to create a humanoid maintenance robot, um, and we took delivery of the first version of this from one of our European um, uh, consortium partners um, uh, in the last few months. Um, and What's very ambitious about this, it won't be taught what to do. Um, it will use cognition, if you like, and inference to, to observe what human engineers are doing at work and then to work out how to engage and collaborate with them in their tasks. So how to help keep them safe, how to do things which perhaps they struggle to do, like being able to reach high and second hands has an extensible torso so it can get up higher than you know, a human engineer could without using a ladder. Um, to work out, oh, you know, they're doing that task, the next thing they're going to need is this particular tool, and to anticipate that and, and, and hand it to them. So that's pushing the boundaries of what people have done so far with robotics, and, and that's why we're working with a consortium of partners where Ocado is providing some of that kind of uh, ro uh, AI and robotics goodness, but our partners around Europe are, are providing the rest. And, um, you know, the reason why we're doing that is obviously it'll, it'll teach us a lot along the way. So lots of spin-off applications and uh, particularly in the area of robotics and AI, you know, we're on a competency acquisition journey. It's not just about what we do. It is very much about what we learn along the way uh, that's, that's really important for the long game. Um, but also because we're going to build a lot of these warehouses. We're going to, as I often put it, we're going to pepper the planet with them, either for ourselves yeah. or for our, our future uh, 
Picardo Smart Platform customers. And, and so having technology that can main, help maintain and ultimately maybe build those facilities in an automated way is going to be very important to us. You're clearly disrupting the re grocery retailing industry. Uh, what is your view about how retailers should react and how they should maybe embrace these technologies as well? Well, you know, we are a pure play retailer, so I, I'm not going to uh, try and lecture to uh, bricks and mortar retailers who are in a very different position, you know, to us. Uh, but obviously now we are partnering with uh, an increasing number of those companies to help them, you know, move online profitably and scalably with our platform. Um, so it is becoming part of our world, even if it's not our own backyard, so to speak, in the UK in terms of what Ocado retail businesses do. And I, um, I think... I think we are on very much on the cusp of, you know, uh, a, 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 an incredibly disruptive and transformational uh, uh, future, if you like, particularly around uh, this intersection of AI and robotics. And I think the challenge is that, you know, people feel they've been at these kinds of positions before and are maybe a little bit kind of tarred and blasé about, oh yes, it's just another of these. But I am a firm believer that this one is different, you know, and we have to react differently. And that's, we have to react differently as retailers, as employers, as uh, parents of the next generation um, who are going to inhabit this world, as governments in terms of building the smart infrastructure to support it, re-engineering our education system to prepare for it, um, and m taking advantage of this opportunity uh, with both hands and not just seeing it as another kind of kind of technology coming our way. I, I, you know, there is no dress rehearsal for this one. It's happening right now. And in fact, I would go so far as to say, you know, the time for talking about it is long over. You know, it's now a question of actually getting out there and, and getting your feet wet and, and uh, executing at scale with it um, before it's frankly too late. You mentioned education, and I know this is one of you, the topics that you're quite passionate about. What do you think is the role of the education system mm -hmm. in the future and what uh, AI has in store? What's some advice you think that you could give to the education system if they asked you, Paul, I, what do you think we need to do? Well, What would you say? Uh, it's definitely not. It is an area I'm very passionate about. Obviously, it's not an area that I'm uh, an expert in, but I, I do think... Um, we have to play the long ball here. It's not, uh, there's a lot of talk and focus on what we need to do in tertiary education in terms of getting, you know, more expertise in area like robotics and AI. And of course we need to do that. Um, and uh, what the government is doing on that is, is very important. But I think we have to look down at what is the other end of an end-to-end -end digital skills pipeline that goes all the way up to primary school that goes through per tertiary education and extends into business. And we have to feed that pipeline along its length. We have to make sure it's not porous, i.e. we don't want people kind of leaking out and, and, and not getting into sort of STEM-based subjects. We need to make sure that the flow of talent down that pipe is as truly diverse as we can make it. Uh, and that isn't just obviously very important topics like you know, gender and, and ethnicity diversity, but it's diversity of mindset, of approach, of you know, ways of working. And, um, and so we need to go right back, I think, and to fundamentally rethink our education system because we need to future-proof it. And I say that very much, not just as an employer, but also as a father, that you know, how we, if education is anything for me, it is about preparing the next generation for the world they're gonna live in and the lives they're gonna lead. And I think that is a very holistic journey. And I think um, the challenges of living in this smart, automated world mean that we're going to have to teach our children things we didn't do in the past, like how to reinvent themselves. You know, we're going to have to turn what would have been seen as the midlife crisis into an, into an art form, into a, into a meta skill, and, and weave those kinds of technologies and that literacy, which is far more than just teaching kids to code. You know, it's, it's being a master of data. It's understanding ultimately, you know, what artificial intelligence can do, you know, what's the role um, of the human in the process, the ethics and the philosophy around it. It's all of that um, that we need to be uh, uh, helping them acquire.